This is Dr. Karamanukian of the Buffalo Niagara Vein Treatment Centers and www.veinsveinsveins.com talking about deep vein thrombosis or DVT. Deep vein thrombosis is the formation of blood clots in the deep veins of the leg or arms. This potentially life-threatening condition has an incidence of about 5 to 20 million cases per year in the United States. The main clinical concern with deep vein thrombosis is the potential of a thrombus or blood clot to break free, travel through the inferior vena cava, through the heart, and get lodged in the vessels of the lungs. This event, called pulmonary embolism, carries a mortality rate of roughly 20 to 30 percent. The formation of deep vein thrombosis can be attributed to one or more of the following factors. Venous stasis, which is sluggish blood flow, injury of the blood vessel wall, or hypercoagulability, which is increased tendency of blood to clot. Risk factors for deep vein thrombosis formation include age more than 40 years, obesity, smoking, pregnancy, trauma, IV drug abuse, or prolonged immobilization, such as due to chronic illness or long trips in cars or airplanes. People with cancer, congestive heart failure, lupus, or recent heart attacks or strokes are also prone to deep vein thrombosis. Recent surgery, Chemotherapy and hormone replacement therapy are also known risk factors for the development of deep vein thrombosis. Patients with deep vein thrombosis of the lower extremities have pain and swelling of the affected leg about 75% of the time. Other symptoms may include increased warmth and redness of the leg and occasionally a low-grade fever. Deep vein thromboses usually occur in the mid to upper leg. The most commonly used test to check for deep vein thrombosis is duplex ultrasonography, which has very good sensitivity and specificity in certain patients. It is most reliable when used on patients who are symptomatic, especially if the symptoms are localized above the knee and below the groin. The most accurate test for deep vein thrombosis, however, is venography, in which intravenous dye is injected in the involved leg. A blood test can also be done which checks for D-dimer levels and fragments. This test, however, is of limited usefulness as it has a high rate of false positives. Deep vein thromboses are treated by administering anticoagulants, such as blood thinners, heparin, or warfarin. Patients are generally started on heparin for immediate anticoagulation and then continued on warfarin for six weeks to six months. Patients who are anticoagulated for three to six months have roughly half the deep vein thrombosis recurrence rate of those who are anticoagulated for only four to six weeks. Anticoagulants are contraindicated in patients with active bleeding or bleeding disorders. These patients may benefit from placement of a greenfield filter in the inferior vena cava. By placing a filter in the vessel which returns blood from the legs, any blood clots are screened out before they can get lodged in the vessels of the lungs. Unless one succumbs to the complication of deep vein thrombosis, such as a massive pulmonary embolism, the outcomes in patients are good. Let's talk a little bit about immobility following surgery. It is a risk factor for the development of venous thromboembolism. Surgery creates a hypercoagulable state and increases the likelihood of blood clot formation. Immobility following surgery such as in bed rest results in venous stasis or sluggish blood flow due to lack of use of the calf muscle pump. General anesthesia also decreases vascular tone and increases vein size resulting in damage of the inside lining of the vein which is the endothelial cells. The risk of venous thromboembolism is lower after spinal or epidural anesthesia than after general anesthesia. Fatal pulmonary embolism rates are less than 1% and as low as 0.2% after general anesthesia. This data was collected from the journal Epidemiology and the title of the article is Risk Factors and Sequela of Venous Thromboembolism published by Dr. Wong, W-O-N-G, and colleagues in the journal Phlebology published in 2012, supplement number 2, pages 2 to 11. This is Dr. Karamanukian of the Vein Treatment Centers of Buffalo, Niagara and veinsveinsveins.com. I can be contacted by calling area code 716-839-3638. If you think you have an acute deep vein thrombosis, call 911 and go to the emergency room. In more chronic forms of deep vein thrombosis, you can contact our office during the day. This is Dr. Karamanukian also of www.peacebridgehealthcare.com. We are minutes away from the 
Southern Ontario region with offices in Williamsville, New York and Clarence, New York. We can be contacted by calling area code 716-839-3638. I'm board certified in cardiovascular surgery and phlebology, which is the specialty of venous diseases. This is Dr. Karmanukian. Thank you.